Uh, in this video, I'm going to take you through Mayer's relationship. Uh, let us say we are have we have one mole of gas and uh, ideal gas, right? It is in an uh, airtight frictionless piston. So this is one mole of gas in an airtight frictionless piston. Initial temperatures are P, V, and T. Right? Let us say we give this heat, right, and carry out this process at constant volume. That means heat is being absorbed by this gas, and we keep on adding small weights to this piston so that the piston does not rise and maintains constant volume. So as a result what happens is we get final pressure as P plus delta P and final temperature as T plus delta T. Okay? Now the amount of heat that has been given is Q1 delta V is 0 because we have not allowed volume to change. So this Q1 is being used to change the internal energy of the gas. So Q1 is equal to 1 into Cv into delta T. 1 because we have got 1 mole of gas. Cv here is molar specific heat at constant volume and delta T is the rise in temperature. From this we get Q1 is equal to Cv delta T. As I would like to mention here that the entire amount of heat has been used to increase internal energy. Since volume has remained constant, there is no work is done. So entire heat is used to increase internal energy and therefore we get Q1 is equal to Cv delta T. Okay. Uh, let us say uh, we allow the gas to come back to its original state PVT again right? and we this time give it heat Q2 but this time allow the piston to rise that means the volume is increasing but the entire process is happening at constant pressure because as it absorbs heat the temperature rises to delta by delta T and the volume increases by delta V. So the piston is rising and the temperature is also rising. We continue to give heat Q2 till such time that the temperature delta T, rise in temperature delta T is same as over here right? and thereby in the process also the volume is increasing. So the total heat given during this process will be 1 into Cp which is molar specific heat at constant pressure into delta T. Right? So Q2 is equal to Cp delta T. Now quite obviously Q2 is larger than Q1 because in case of Q2, not only has the temperature risen by delta T, but also work has been done because there has been an increase in volume. Therefore, we write Q2 is equal to Q1 plus W. Right? The amount of heat given for increasing temperature is same as Q1 because in both the cases the temperature rises delta T. Therefore, we write Q2 is equal to Q1 plus W. And from that, Q2 is Cp delta T, Q1 is Cv delta T and W is P into change in volume. Let's move over here. For this particular state, PVT, we can write PV is equal to an RT, which is the gas equation, ideal gas equation for one mole of gas. PV is equal to RT. For this state, PV plus delta V and T plus delta T, I can write PV plus delta V is equal to RT plus delta T, the ideal gas equation for one mole of gas. If I expand this, I'll get PV plus P delta V is equal to RT plus R delta T. Now PV and RT are equal as we can see over here therefore they will get cancelled out and we will get P delta V is equal to R delta T. P delta V is equal to R delta T. And if I use this equation 3 over here, right? so Cp delta T is equal to Cv delta T. Now for P delta V I can write R delta T because P delta V is R delta T. So P is equal to R delta T. I am having delta T, delta T, delta T in all three terms so that will get, will get cancelled out and we get Cp is equal to Cv plus R right? and therefore Cp minus Cv is equal to R which is known as Mayer's relation. Right? So let me write it over here again Cp minus Cv is equal to R right? and therefore Cp minus Cv is equal to 8.31 Joule per mole per Kelvin. Right? Now if you want the value of Cp minus Cv in calories then we will get is equal to 8.31 upon 4.18 calorie per mole per kelvin right and uh, it turns out that cp minus cv in this case would be approximately approximately 2 calorie per mole per kelvin right cp minus cv is 2 calorie per mole per kelvin right and this is the mathematical form of mayor's relationship